right, today's project is removing these batteries so we can get down to the uh, diesel tank that's under the battery tray. These are some big old beefy heavy 6 volt 232 amp hour batteries. And I'm suspecting that they might be bad also. The water is a little bit low so I'm going to top them off and plug them back in. But the way they wired this I have to unwire some of them to be able to refill any water in there. So I'm going to pull them all out and refill them with water and check them all out. What does Malvina have to say about this? <laughs> She's just rocking out. <laughs> Having a great morning. We went for a run this morning. Happy girl. Happy girl. <laughs> so you can see here, you have to take the caps off here to be able to undo the terminals there. And you have to take the terminals off Actually, I already did that one. But you had to take the terminal off to be able to undo the cap right here. So my guess is that these were not really super well maintained because of the complication of doing all of this. So not super hopeful that these are going to be in good condition. Yeah, we'll see how they look when I test them individually. Now we got all the batteries out. Yeah, they weren't too bad. Luckily, because they're six volts and, you know, then they're kind of split in two, so they're not too heavy. This is the whole battery, battery tray. You can see it barely even fits in the boat, so that was very precise. I don't know how they, <laughs> if they did that on purpose or if that was just lucky, but we'll call it lucky. And this is the fuel tank down here. So, kind of easy to even pass by when we were first looking at the boat. I did not even know that there was a fuel tank down here. Actually, for quite a bit longer after when we were first looking the boat, looking at the boat, I didn't know it was down here. I was trying to figure out where the auxiliary tank is because it's listed as having a, two tanks. I only could find the one that is under here. So I think, from what I understand, we have a hundred gallons under here, and then a hundred gallons under here. So this one goes kind of deeper into the bilge and then I think it continues on past the engine back here. Talk to me baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right so I just uh, kind of vacuumed all these up just because I'm going to be opening all these caps and I don't want any dust to, to fall in the cells when I open those up. And I went through them actually and tested all the voltage on these and you know, we had some kind of flickering lights whenever the toilet would pump and stuff like that. We'd get a little surge. Now I'm just going through and testing all of these. And I'm getting 6.4, 6.5, 6.4, and then 4.3. So we found the culprit. So, not sure if this one's going to be able to be re vived 4.3 kind of sounds like we're just we got a whole bad cell in there you can also see that this one is a little bit of uh kind of exploded right there so hopefully it's just you know short on water maybe we can do a little hydrometer test little top off troubleshooting and maybe revive this one but i'm not too sure about that good thing is we found it it's only one battery bad thing is these are six volt batteries so they're they have to be wired in series to be worth anything to us and so that means we lose a whole pair of batteries not just the one battery without just buying another one but then another one would be brand new so it would have a different kind of ampacity and it would just complicate the whole system and not really work probably end up you know killing that brand new one quicker because we're mixing it with all the old ones here so we'll do a couple tests on this and see where we go i love your hair <laughs> <laughs> jimmy neutron <laughs> <laughs> so now we're doing another little test on this bad battery so we can actually identify which cell is bad or which two are bad I've actually already done this, but I'm going to demonstrate again for you guys this one 
This is a hydrometer, so this will measure basically the specific gravity of the fluid that's in there. This is not the most high-tech one, but it came with the boat, and it's all right. It'll work. We're in the green on this one, right? So basically, it'll float to to its specific gravity there. We're in the green, and so we're gonna call that cell good. We'll move on to the next one. And I don't know if this is a real, <laughs> I believe this one's good, but I think this is a turkey baster. Uh, <laughs> And it kind of gets stuck in there, but you can see that it is sinking all the way to the red there, where before it was floating up to where the water level was in the green there. So this is a bad cell. And then this one is also bad. That's the problem with doing these kind of batteries. And it's actually the benefit of doing six volt batteries is that you can balance your batteries a little bit better it does take some some work to go through and balance them because you would have to rearrange the wires but i labeled these so this one was actually the last in the line and this was where the negative was hooked up to everything all the house dc system so the positive basically starts on the other side and then has to go through here, and then this is the negative. So when it's charging, it's charging from that side, and the voltage is kind of getting lower and lower and lower, so this one never ends up getting a full charge. And after years and years of not getting a full charge, it ends up depleting the battery's charging ability. So we'll try and, I think I do have a six volt power supply. We'll hook that up onto here and try to revive this battery, see if it can hold the six volt charge or if it's just gonna keep draining the whole system. And then when I put these back together, I'm probably gonna mix them up a little bit so that they get more balanced. Hopefully we can lengthen the life of the rest of these. Awesome. Science, baby. Science. I'm just checking all the levels on the other ones. I don't think I need to check with the hydrometer for the other ones because they are holding voltage. They're all similar, 6.4 volts, which is a healthy voltage. Theoretically, electrochemically speaking, they should be at 6.3 volts. Each cell should be at 2.1 volts. Um, so three in series should be 6.3. They always end up a little bit higher than that. But that's just theoretical voltage. The actual voltage was 6.4 to 6.5 on here. And then we had 4.5 on here. So it looks like... I was hoping we just maybe had one bad cell. But we should be able to fix that one anyways. What else do you want to ask me? Professor Connor. <laughs> <laughs> teaching me about hydrogen <laughs> right uh-huh basically that's what it's doing i made a hydrogen car when i was in my early 20s it wasn't really a successful hydrogen car but <laughs> i tried to supplement my my gasoline with hydrogen it was kind of a fun experiment but basically you're doing the same thing as creating a battery there you're splitting the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms apart and then you get to burn the hydrogen and it's kind of fun you get to make little bombs out of it too i used to fill up water balloons full of hydrogen and then you could light them in it i don't know if we want to include that on the yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like you're gonna teach people how to make bombs this is not a good idea we're definitely gonna get canceled knows how to make bombs. <laughs> but we're not allowed to have fireworks in california so that was my bypass to the legal regulations against fireworks they don't say anything about hydrogen bombs well they might but i haven't read that one <laughs> <laughs>